be interjecting Tolkien-esque and Middle Earth archetypes and lore into current events, just like I do with Lovecraft. I decided I'll do them as separate independent videos from now on. They do have a point, those people, even though I know most of you like when I bring in the Middle Earth lore and the Lovecraftian lore into understanding the present world that we live in. It's probably better for just to keep them separate. And also people who are into the Middle Earth stuff and that kind of thing can just find the videos directly. So they'll have the titles like the title of this one. So this is something you've heard me speak a little bit on, on before. And it's about Tolkien's strange relationship with megaliths. Now, the main reference to megaliths in his work is the Barrow Downs. The Barrow Downs are rest of the Brandywine River. And they're ancient, they're ancient megaliths that where the, the souls of great men uh, so, you know, were interned many thousands of years ago. The bodies, they were burial grounds, he believed. Or they were in, in the lore. And when the Age of Sun happened, uh, demons who couldn't deal with sunlight went to the Barrow Downs and they could inhabit a body like in, like, funny enough, very similar to yesterday's video, they could find a body and inhabit that to somehow exist. So they went into the bodies of the, the, the ancient men who were dead and who still had their armor on or buried with their armor and so on. And they animated them in a necromancy kind of way. And they became the Barrowites or the Barrowites. And it was a, the member in, I spoke about Tom Bombadil and the, he had one of the things he had done, he, just re he rescued the hobbits after they'd been kidnapped by a Barrowite. Now, the, the way Tolkien describes these megalithic locations is they're full of evil and demonic spirits and all this kind of thing and their legacies of ancient sorcery and witchcraft although he does acknowledge that they were once revered as great tombs of, of ancient men and warriors in the past kings now i just always found that kind of interesting it said uh, that it's just part, an interesting part of the lore but it wasn't until a couple of years ago, I think it was the Irish Times, published some letters about Tolkien's uh, attitude towards Ireland. And uh, they tried to make out in the headline that he was kind of, he had a problem with the Irish. He did really. It was his typical like sensationalism. They did the same with Lovecraft too. And uh, Tolkien had spent many times in Ireland. He was a sitting professor of, of ancient European languages at University College Galway and he traveled here a lot in fact the first time he ever flew on an airplane was on an Aer Lingus flight from from Heathrow to Dublin uh, not long before back in the 60s it was the very first very first place he ever flew to on a plane was, was was Ireland and his last trips to Ireland he complained that the Ireland was changing rapidly uh, the kind of rural agrarian culture was vanishing towards more of industrial commercial culture, which was true. And uh, he, he said, like, the old Ireland is sadly being swallowed up by the modern world, which is what happened. And he said things that the, lands, the landscape of Ireland was evil. He said the actual land of Ireland was evil. Now, you see so much of that in his work. Now, anyone who's been to Ireland will tell, knows that the circumference of the country is surrounded by mountains. But in the middle of the country is an enormous bog called the Bog of Allen. And the Bog of Allen sounds very... And the, and the bogs in general around Ireland sound very much like the dead marshes in Middle Earth. And we know that bodies in pagan times from pagan times have been pulled out of them. So, you know, like the great battle that happened in the Dead Marshes where there was elves and men and orcs suspended in the, wa in, in the, in the water, their spirits were there. And so he might have got that from that. 
But he said the only thing that keeps the evil within the landscape of Ireland at bay is the the fate of the, the, the fate of the Irish people. So he found the spiritual lives of Irish people to be very moving and touching. You know, Tolkien himself was a devout Catholic. And a he said that's what kept the evil of Ireland at bay. And you know, Ireland is full of megaliths and stone circles and, and particularly mounds and stuff like that. And, you know, and so he would not have been comfortable with that aspect of Ireland because he, he seemed, he had this sort of very negative attitude towards megaliths and, and megalithic locations from the Neolithic and the Bronze Age. Although he did admit, say that they were originally places of great reverence, they became... They became infected with dark spirits, and in the case of his own lord, the, the Barrites. Now, there's another thing too regarding Tolkien and Megaliths that has an Irish connection, is that if you look at the way the tower, the tower at Mordor and the tower at Isengard were described, well, the tower at Mordor was described was in particular was nothing like how it was shown in the movie, which was you know, really cool with the eyes sour and everything. In fact, in many of the early illustrations in some of the the art books, the tower is identically identical to an Irish round tower. Exact the same shape with the conical cap and everything. As if Tolkien suspected what I've been pushing out there for years, that the Tolkien that the, the round towers of Ireland were not built by Christians. The Christians inherited them from an a, an Arden Age pagan culture and put the conical domes on the top. So maybe there was an, ele an element of Tolkien's same, I won't call it neuroses, but a hang-up regarding megaliths that he also applied to the round towers of Ireland. So I think that's, it's Tolkien's, now, you know, England, you know, is full of megaliths, but not the part of England that he grew up in, like the West Midlands on the Welsh borders, there, there's not a lot. Of, there's not a lot of megaliths like Offa's Dyke. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. It's mostly famous for very ancient churches. Like there's an ancient church near Wrexham that has a statue of the goddess Nemesis in it, and there's a few other things like that around there. And there's lots of really beautiful, a bit far to the north in Flintshire and Holywell. There's the beautiful, you know, you know Saint Winifred's, uh, you know, well. And there's a lot of that kind of thing, a lot of early Christian, beautiful churches, churchyards that are, you know, that ha that are often built upon previously pagan sites. And so that's where, where he grew up. That's predominantly what was out there. Although he grew up on the, near the Welsh borders, he in the, in the west and the Midlands of England, it, that was there's not a lot of megaliths around there. You have to go further into Wales or up towards the north of Liverpool and Manchester towards the uh, the uh, the Lake District or down south to the south of England like around Avebury, Wilshire and all these places. There's not a lot of megaliths in that where he grew up. So he didn't have that familiarity of growing up as a child, I don't think, with them. So when he, he obviously had an, you wonder if he had an, when he encountered megaliths, did he have a bad vibe or a bad experience? Did, I, what, did, did he really only explore them when he went to Ireland? I don't know. But it's a very interesting thing, Tolkien's attitude towards megaliths and his attitude towards Ireland are kind of rooted in the same thing, that a, a pre-Christian past that has, you know, a, a devilishness about it. And even the whole thing of the sun, if you think of the sun as being, you know, the son of God, Jesus Christ, and the age of the sun in middle in a, in the Middle Earth lore, and that's what drove the the demons towards the barrows to become the barrow rates, and they're also destroyed by sunlight and they dissipate into a mist. They're also shapeshifters too, as well. So, Tolkien's attitude to megaliths is very very interesting, very interesting indeed. So there you go, I didn't put this on a regular video, but I'll make a regular Vox Pop video after this. Take care.